I'm Patrick Lancaster and this is a special report for Redacted. Right now we are in the center of Yerevan and Republic Square. Yerevan, Armenia is in the capital of Armenia. As you may have heard, there's been a lot of unrest going on here following the attacks and resumption of hostilities in the Republic of Artsakh, as the local Armenians call it, or is internationally recognized as Nagorno-Karabakh, part of Azerbaijan, even though the, the, the people that live there are Armenians. So it's been a very uh, disputed area for basically a really long time. Um, um, there's churches in the Republic of Artsakh that are almost 2,000 years old, Christian churches. Now, Azerbaijan is a Muslim country, so it makes sense that this land was Armenian controlled. But this hostility started when Azerbaijan broke the trilateral agreement three days ago, that, and the agreement was signed between Russia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan in November of 2020 just following the 44-day war, which was at, I showed people what was happening there during the heat of the battles. And this Azerbaijan broke the agreement three days ago. The next day, they did another ceasefire, where they, apparently they, there was agreements to withdraw all the military equipment. Now, Armenia says they didn't have any military equipment in Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh at the time, so it's supposedly the Artsakh is defense force. And right now, we're showing you here in Armenia, in Yerevan, what uh, the people think about this newest agreement and the government here, because in addition to just evacuating the equipment from Artsakh, they apparently decided to reintegrate, as they call it, the Garden of Karabakh into Azerbaijan, because, I mean, as I said, there's a lot of bad blood. I mean, there was a referendum almost 40 years ago where the Armenians voted to break away from Azerbaijan and join Armenia and become independent. And following that, there was the war between Azerbaijan and Armenia, which Armenia came out on top and took control of Nagorno-Karabakh and the seven regions around it, which were the buffer zones, as they called it. But in the 44-day war, which we covered in 2020, um, Armenia lost quite a bit of those territories and just a portion remained. But, as I said, three days ago, Azerbaijan moved in and has been hammering civilian targets and military targets, apparently. And we're uh, here to see what the people have to say about this and what the people have to say about the the handling of this by the Armenian government and it doesn't seem like it's very good because there are three days uh, protesting here and just over here we can see how there are students lining the street, blocking the street here in the center of Yerevan. We can see the students lined up here and this is the later part of the day. We just arrived uh, today, we've been at it all day filming exactly what's been going on, what the people have to say, what they're doing and why they're doing it. And now we're going to have a look back at what has happened throughout today. We do this for you because uh, we believe you need to see more. So here is the events, the violence, the protest of today's day here in Europe. Yep. All right, so what appears to be happening uh, here is the police are making an arm chain here, a, a human chain, where they're uh, trying to uh, block uh, protesters from coming in the street uh, because that's been a tactic of the protesters here is uh, in the civil disobedience to block many of the roads uh, here in the center. So uh, now we see there's some uh, conflict erupting between some of the protesters and the police. <laughs> All right, so we see a, another large group of uh, protesters have just arrived in Republic Square and have basically overpowered the human change of the police, but in a peaceful way, just walking between them, no violence yet. I hope it stays that way. I 
And we now see that the police are deploying what we can only call riot police uh, with the shields and masks and helmets. Quite an uptake from what we saw a few minutes ago. And we can see how the emotions are getting heated between the, the police and the protesters. We hope it doesn't get violent like we just saw, but we see how this can just erupt in a second's time. We were trying to get an interview and then violence started. Скопление людей. Но мы протестуем, мы хотим отставки Никола Пашиняна. Почему? Ну потому что он ненормальный, потому что он весь наш народ ведет на жертву. Вы видели, что происходит в Арцахе? Он это, принял приказ, чтобы люди из Арцаха не смогли приехать в Армению. Он не хочет ничем помогать, ни армии, ничем помогать арцавск, арцавским армянам, понимаете? Это наш народ, это наши армяне. Он все отдает, подписывает договоры с Оливом, всю, всю нашу родину он отдает Азербайджану. Это не армянский это премьер-министр, это азербайджанский, не знаю кто, подкаблучник Алиев, понимаете? А скажите, пожалуйста, а что вы хотите именно добиться? Мы хотим, чтобы наш народ жил в своей, на своей родине. Мы хотим нашей земли, мы хотим, чтобы нашим армян, наши армяне не подвергались так, таким этими унижениями, таким убийством, понимаете? Их убивают там. Режут детям, головы режут детям. Это не нормально, это не война. Это геноцид народа, армянского народа. And what do you think about Russia? Приняли еще Илхам, еще этот Илхам договорился с Николаем, чтобы он написал имена тех людей, наших мужей и братьев, имена, чтобы кто воевал в Нагорном Карабахе, в Арцахин воевал в 90-е годы до сих пор. Эти имена. А, а эти, имена этих людей, чтобы арестовать и избивать и мучать и убивать. Мы знаем, что они делают с нашими э, детьми, которые попали в плены. Они просто режут нашим детям головы, понимаете? Это просто ужасно. Это не люди, это звери. А этот предатель, он предатель настоящий. Он отказался от всего, он даже отказался от Сюника, отказался от Вартаниса, отказывается от Арцаха. Пусть придет нормальный человек, который будет править Арменией, чтобы мы знали, что нам делать. Мы не можем 
Дороги закрыты, мы ничем не можем. Наши люди не могут помогать нашим людям, понимаете? Нашим детям. У меня родственники там. И я не знаю ничего о них. Я не могу не дозвониться, не знаю, где они, что с ними случилось. Они зашли в деревню и убивали там людей. Мирных жителей. Я не говорю про военных, мирных жителей. And, uh, что вы думаете о России? Россия, Россия помочь или как? А что может сделать? Я хочу спросить. Если, uh, если Россия предложила, Россия и Иран предложили Армении, этому предателю предложили военные учения делать вместе. И он отказался. Если Россия хотела помочь, он отказывается. Иран хотел помочь, он отказывается. Что может делать Россия, если я свой, отдаю свой дом врагу? Если я приняла решение, что хочу отдать арми, э, это, Арцах Азербайджану? А -а -а. Что может сделать Россия? Скажите мне, пожалуйста. А -а -а. Ничего не могу сделать. Да помочь, не только да? Россия, другая страна. Да? Какая разница? Россия а -а -а. что? Потому что сам сделали. Это... Он, да, потому что он, я же говорю, он преемник этого Алиева. Он человек, которого сюда послал Алиев, чтобы разрушить Армению, понимаете? Разрушить Арцах. Алиев. Пашинян. Да, Алиев. Это его человек. Он там приказывает. Он здесь... Алиев приказывает. Никол выполняет. Все, что он приказал там, на второй день выполняет Алиев. Никол. Я сама из Ганзка, mm -hmm. из Кирова, нынешнего Гянджи. Ну, mm -hmm. Раньше был Ганзак, а после был Кировабад. Я оттуда. С 1988 -го года, когда начал, начался геноцид армян, если вы знаете, нас выгоняли и убивали в Баку, в, Гянджи, в Ганзаке, в, этом, в Сумгаите. Я из этих детей, бежен, беженцы были, я из них. Но мои все родственники в Арцахе, мы уже в который раз видим, как наши, нас турки режут. Весь мир ничего не делает. Я, я понимаю, ну, эта скотина так отреагировала. Все делает по велению Илхама. Но все-таки можно же чем-то помочь хотя бы тем людям, которые остались в живых. Санкции какие-нибудь на Алиева или что-нибудь такое. Никто ничем не хочет помогать. Хотя я еще раз говорю, если ты сам свой, народ, свой дом отдаешь врагу, конечно же, никто не будет тебе помогать. Мы хотим, ему, хотим его вообще убрать. Он должен понести наказание. За то, что он сделал с нашим народом. Это не человек, это не армянин. All right, so we see how there's been some violence, some calm, and there appears to be younger people, maybe from school, here in the road, blocking the road here. So let's have a talk. Hello. Hi. Uh, speaking us? <laughs> Can I ask you, what are you doing here? Why are you here? What, what? Why are you here? We are here because our family, we can see our family, and genocide now is happening in Artsakh. We are here just to protect their rules, and we see our families. That's why we are here protesting to this country, especially the government. And your family is, your family is where? My family is Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh. And now genocide is happening. Mm, government doesn't let my family and all the people there come to Armenia. And that's why we all are here. And what do you think about the, I mean, the fighting that's going on in the last few days? Yes, fights was happening in Armenia, but we don't know exact numbers, how many people have died, but I mean, we protested, we, we don't want any kind of genocide or war. We just want peace and we want to live in our land and all our families are there. We are thinking about them, we can't see them, we are worried about them. And this is the, the only few thing that we can do for them. And so, 
Azerbaijan tells the world that uh, Artsakh Nagorno-Karabakh is uh, Azerbaijan. What, do, what can you say about that? What is Artsakh or uh, Nagorno-Karabakh? What country is it? Okay, Artsakh, internationally called Nagorno-Karabakh, I think has always been Armenian and that it's only Azerbaijan can say many things but Azerbaijan can say many things but the churches that are happening Christian from first century is the proof that piece of land is Armenian and can't be Azerbaijan part. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I it's, it's a real proof that Divang is Christian, Amaras is Christian, and it's a proof. What can I say else? Azerbaijan, there's, there's, there's Azerbaijan as a country, Azerbaijan has been in uh, since 19th century or maybe 20th century. But that Christian churches are Armenian. Everything there is Armenian. I, I don't really care what the world says. I know that all my family, my people are there. And no matter what, they are fighting for their uh, rules to live in their homes. After nine months of blockade, even uh, after being so hungry and not having any kind of fuel, they fight it for two days. I know that it's a horrible situation there, but people still want to live there and we want to go and see them. Um, about the blockade, what, what happened? What was the blockade? Blockade is when Artsakh was surrounded only by Azerbaijan and not any kind of humanitarian products c couldn't be okay delivered to Artsakh and people were starving, there was no fuel. People, uh, in order to come to another city, people was always walking and people were dying out of hunger. That's blockade. And I think everyone in the world should know about that, that even after nine months of blockade, people fight it for their rules. And uh, so during the blockade, uh, it was Azerbaijan that cut off the Latin corridor, which they were supposed to give uh, part of the trilateral agreements in 2020 after the 44-day war, correct? So they broke the agreements. Okay, I don't think Azerbaijan broke the agreement because I don't really anticipate anything from my enemy. I think it was Russia's responsibility to keep the corridor open because as it was signed in 22... Okay, 2000, okay. In November, in November month, it was okay. It was signed that Russia should keep that corridor open in order to provide people in and out. But actually, that wasn't happening, and that was Russia's responsibilities. Armenian doesn't anticipate anything from Turkey or Azerbaijan. We just, we are here for, and we demand from Armenian government and from Russian peacekeepers. And what do you think the future is going to be for Artsakh? Um, uh, I don't know seriously, but I hope uh, we will able we will be able to come home again. And the minimum thing that I want is uh, I want to see my family alive. Uh, I don't think that integration will ever be happening because life proved us many times that living with Azerbaijan is just a genocide and I want my family alive with me and an opportunity to come back our top again. And as far as the starting of the fighting three days ago, what, what happened? How did the fighting start in your opinion? How did the fight start? Yeah, three days ago. Azerbaijan just wanted to make fight and did it, nothing else. Armenia is just protecting its people. And do you think Armenia will do anything to help the people in Arsenal? That's, oh my god, I don't know how to say because I'm against this government. I hate this government more than Azerbaijan, seriously. And I don't think that they will ever do something for my people in Artsakh because I think they are partly Azerbaijanian. And that's why I want them to just sign and go out from here. The government? Yes, the government. Uh, because Pashinyan, yes, mostly we are starving. We are in this bad situation because of Pashinyan. And all we demand, like people's peace or life being here, all I demand is from Pashinyan and not Azerbaijan. Because it's senseless to demand something from anyone. Thank you very much.
So you hear it as we hear. We show you exactly what the situation is here and what we hear from the people on the ground. We show you what the situation is, no matter what. Please uh, stick with us. We've got a lot more to come. This has been a special update and report for Redacted. Uh, and soon my full document documentary film will be on my channel on YouTube, Patrick Lancaster, so you can check it out later there after I'm done here for these weeks showing you what the people, what the refugees, what the people of Armenia, Afghanistan, Klaterbuk, Artsakh, whatever you want to call it, feel and have done to them. We're showing you everything on the ground.